Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Malaysia and this is my YouTube channel dedicated to my business, Simple Clarity Co., where we do all things candles, planners, journals, stationery. We get to see the behind the scenes, product creation, and you get insight on new launches. So if this is something that you would like to stay um, up to date on, make sure you go ahead and subscribe to the channel. And if this video, which is going to be candle making, is something you're interested in, make sure to like the video so I know. All right, so let's jump into what we're actually doing today. As you can see by the title, it's going to be candle making. My method versus the manufacturer recommended method. Oh, the manufacturer recommended method. So if that's something you're interested in, please stay tuned. <laughs> always recommended to start with the manufacturer's method and then go from there tweaking it I never actually did that um, to each his own but I pretty much when I first started making candles it's been mm, about a year in a year and like five months a year and a half almost um, I I did a lot of research I actually got a collective amount of information and kind of went off of that so I never did the manufacturer um, method and um, today I decided since I have to make a candle for a co-worker my co-worker Rick it is his birthday candle I decided why don't I use one of the free samples that candle science gave me in one of my orders and do kind of a head-to-head -head. what you will need for candle making let's just go through a quick run through you'll need something to melt the wax in something that is safe to melt your wax in. I recommend doing this or maybe glass. Um, something to stir it with. Some people use skewers, some people use um, spatulas. And then we need a jar. This right here is the, uh, I don't know, is it 12 or 11 ounce canning jar? It's on Candle Science, Flaming Candle. It pretty much Lone Star Candle. It, it's just a canning jar. You can find these in bulk anywhere. So there's that. You need your wick of choice. Today we're doing wooden wicks. It's autumn. I would like to give someone a wooden wick candle that crackles and sets the mood. And then I have the wick holder, which is a little metal. It's on this side, right here. Then you'll need your fragrance oil of choice. I am using one that already came pre-measured one ounce in weight. So it's in weight, not in fluid ounces. This one is the Flaming Candles Kentucky Bourbon. And then this one uh, was a free sample. It is Candle Science Spice Honey and Tonka. And they both give off a nice masculine scent. Um, this one's a little bit more spicier, but I like it. And this one's like a smooth spicy. So I feel like they would complement each other while I'm making them. And then finally, you need your warning label. Whether you make them your own or you buy them um, in the rolls. You can get them off of any candle supply. You can get them off of Amazon if you wanted to. Since this is not for sale, it's not something that's for sale, how I label my candles is I just put on the top here um, my logo, not for resale, and the name that I'm going to name the candle. This one says Birthday Bourbon because it was his birthday. And this one, I am calling this one the Honey Do List because like I said, it has a nice soft masculine scent and I feel like people have honey do lists all the time. Like, honey, can you do this? Honey, can you do that? So it, it's something cute. Oh, duh. We need our wax here. Um, this is not how much I'm going to use. I'm going to use more than this. But just as you can see, I use uh, my C3 Cargill Nature Wax. Did I say all that backwards? And then what you will also need is a um, scale that measures in ounces. Not fluid ounces. You want ounces. Or even grams people also measure their candle um, supplies in grams so one of those and then you want to have a heat gun so throughout the video we're mainly going to compare our temperature uh, during each step pretty much um, the fragrance load is still going to be the same I do a 10% fragrance load I don't have the air conditioning on right now in my house so these glasses let's see what they're at the surface says it's at 80 let's make sure 79.80 that's what the glass is at so it should they're even i'm gonna check this one too this one says 77 so i oh so i should probably 78 so 
One says 79, one says 78. They're very, very close, but we're going to pretty much compare how the candle settles um, during the cooling and curing process. So let's jump into the video and get started on weighing the waxes. So here's the weight of an empty tin. I'm gonna tear that off. I kind of moved it. There it goes, it's on zero. Oh, I touched it, okay. We're gonna pour in our wax until we get to 10 ounces. So this is pretty close, it's 10.02. Perfect, they both have 10.02, so we're really going pretty darn even on this. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and put them on the stove. I do use a double boiler method where you put about two inches of water into a pot and you sit one of the tins inside the pot and let that water heat up and melt the wax so you don't burn the wax. So that's what we're gonna do right now. They're both in their pots and there's about two inches of water in each pot and we'll let that melt. I forgot to tell you that you also need wick stickers. These hold down the metal part of the wick, you put it on there and you put it at the bottom of the jar to keep it in place. So that when it gets down to the bottom of that jar, you don't end up having a floating wick. Let's prep our jars. The first thing we're gonna need is rubbing alcohol. This is a little squirt bottle I got from Dollar Tree and I just pour my rubbing alcohol in it. It makes it an easier application. And we wanna do that because we wanna clean the jar. We wanna get all the dust out of there. And when you clean the bottom of the jar with the rubbing alcohol, it just helps the wick sticker or whatever you're using to keep your wick in place. And I only do two sprays. You don't wanna get crazy with it because you want it to dry relatively quickly. Take some paper towel and just wipe it out. All right, so let's go ahead and get our wicks to the stuck to the bottom of the jar. You just simply insert the wick into this um, lipped part of the wick holder, and uh, that's it. All right, so we are going to go ahead and add our wick stickers to the bottom of the wick holder, actually. Not the wick, but the wick holder. I pushed like five seconds to make sure it's stuck, but... Um, or you can um, cut off the excess. So that it's a straight line and kind of uniformed to the bottom of the holder. All your preference. There we go, perfect. And then if you look at the bottom, nothing is lifting up. It's a perfect adhesion to the bottom and this one's actually right down the middle. Hello, how are you doing? <laughs> I brought you guys in a little closer so you can see me write this down, but I am going to look up the manufacturer method and I'm going to write that down and then I'm going to write down my method, okay? Okay, great, let's do this. Is car, gill, sorry, I'm right-handed. You'll see it when I get done writing. I said heat between 130 to 190, add fragrance oil right before you pour it, and the pouring temperature should be somewhere between 120 and 165. They said that you can do a maximum fragrance oil load of 10% with additive. So once you add things to it, you can add 10%, but they recommend 6%. So here goes mine. I heat to 175 to 180. Add fragrance oil at 140. I pour at 125 through 128. And I always do a fragrance load of 10%, and I've never done a 6%, and I will not. We have both of them off of the stove now. This one, and we get to work kind of fast because it's only 10 ounces, so it cools quickly. This one's at 177. The manufacturer recommended anywhere between 130 and 190. So we're closer to 190 on this one. And this one is at 170, which is, I'm, I usually go around 170, really 170 to 180, but it's cooling. So it was at 175, so I took it off the thing, but they're cooling quickly. So let's go ahead. Um, mine can cool down to 140. So my temperature method can cool down to 140. This one, I'm going to have it cool down to, uh, which was the max. The max was 165. It's right here, backwards. But I'm going to let it cool down to um, 165. And then I'm going to put the fragrance oil in and stir it for two minutes and pour it right away. Because that's what they said to do. And when I do take them off the stove, I do give them a very gentle 
gentle stir. We're already we're already at 165. Look at that, so quick. So it's at 165, just after stirring it a little bit. No, no, this one's my method. Guys, oh my gosh. So let's just switch spots. Well, luckily, all we gotta do is switch spots. I don't know what I was thinking just now. Lord, I'm glad I caught myself, right? So it's at 165. Let's go ahead and add the spice tonka in at 165. The flash point of this spice tonka is 212 degrees. So we're perfectly fine. And then let me get the clock ready. Oh, girl, you should have been ready so you ain't have to get ready, right? Right. Two minutes. And we're going to stir for two minutes. Very gently because we don't want to create any bubbles. We don't want any bubbles. And then we'll go ahead and pour right away, just like, oh, oh, oh. Put your warning label on. I'm putting my warning label on now. You can do this when it's a finished product and everything, but I just want to do it for the purpose of the video. Make sure I physically put on the warning label so you guys know. Put it on. All right. Let's go ahead and pour this. We're going to pour at a medium rate. We're not pouring fast. It just, it started adhering to the glass, like going up the glass perfectly. So let's switch these spots real quick because this candle is done. I'm going to carefully move this candle over. We're going to put the warning label on the bottom of this one. Now this candle is going to be my method of adding and pouring. So warning label's on. We're going to just give it a gentle stir. Check the temperature on top. I'm at 142. I'm sorry, 141. 140. It just went to 140. So I'm going to go ahead and add in my Kentucky bourbon. I do like to give my stuff a little spin and then add it into the there. Um, I pour going down the side because I don't want to create bubbles. You do what you want to do. All right, and then we're going to get our timer back on, and I'm going to stir for two minutes. I forgot to mention that the Kentucky Bourbon Flashpoint was 168 degrees Fahrenheit. Some bubbles try to come in my life. Uh-uh. All right, we are at 126, and I pour between 125 and 128, so let's go ahead and pour. And as you can see, I don't pour really fast. I pour uh, medium to slow. It's it's still nice and liquidy. It's not um, chunky or anything like that. And that's it. So we're going to set this to the side as well. Oh, do I see a bubble on my wick? Oh, no. I'll actually show you a side-by-side -side. I don't know why I moved it over there that didn't make any sense my apologies guys so here's a side-by-side -side. you see how you can still see through the one that we poured at a higher temperature and then the one that I poured at my temperature is kind of already settling and yeah these are the tops of them beautiful so far of course it's still hot and then this one, you can see it's starting to solidify a little bit around the top. But yeah. Then we'll let these sit and um, see how they, uh, what is it called? Settle in a couple of hours. I'll show you the tops of them. <laughs> This is six days later, and if you can see the glass adhesion on the honeydew list one, which was based off of the manufacturer's pour temperature and everything, 
the glass adhesion is just completely not there see where it starts down at the bottom this is where you can see it's no glass adhesion glass adhesion so pouring at a higher temperature can cause this um my air conditioner was off so i don't know because i bumped the table this separation happened around the wick on this one so i had a lot more giving ness if you will is that a word it was a lot more giving around this wick when i accidentally bumped the table it has this little crack and i'm sure that's from me bumping the table it probably would have um settled a lot smoother but the glass adhesion is horrible this is the one i poured at 120 uh what was it 26 degrees perfect glass adhesion but as you can see in the previous clip i bumped the table as it was settled because it settled quick quicker of course um this is the birthday bourbon i bumped the table as it was settled around the wick and i caused a freaking hole i just took a heat gun to the top and it's really not that bad. You can see where the hole was filled in at. That was so my bad for bumping the table. I was so upset. I probably would have gotten just a, this nice little rough rustic top and just like a little crack around here just because it's dipping in. As you can see, it dips in. So I probably would have had just that little minor like soft crack right there. That would have been fine. It would have fit the rustic theme of this canning jar. But um, I bumped the table and messed that up. So sorry. Um, but otherwise, glass adhesion on this is freaking out of this world amazing. Well, this one, it, you pick which the lesser of two evils, I guess. You know, you might have to heat gun the top if you're like me and bump the table. I mean, you don't have a lot of wiggle room to mess up whenever you're pouring at a low temperature. At a higher temperature, you, you got to, you know keep your house hot you know keep your environment not even hot but i would say it was 70 it was 74 degrees in here and this is what happened at 74 degrees to that one opposed to this one um you know people that live in a warmer climate this might be an issue during the summer this might be an issue but this all year round is going to be fine so you just pick which one you you know want to deal with the most this can be fixed but it's not necessary necessary to be honest if there is poor glass adhesion it, it doesn't make your candle honestly less valuable you'll see this in premium candles in the store it happens but if you're really a stickler about at least having a uniform glass adhesion look i would pour a lower temperature the smoothness though at the top of this is is beautiful it it performs immaculate with the smoothness at the top like i said i bumped the table so yeah that's the final results guys i hope this video helped anybody um, that is working with the uh, Nature C3 Wax. This is what happens. Um, but yeah, I want to thank you guys for watching the video. And I'll talk to you in the next one. Bye. Update. I just lit this to see how the fragrance throw would be. And there is a huge tunneling issue i've literally never ran into tunneling before so when this just blew out it literally it was lit for about three minutes right and i went to turn around to see how it was doing to see the pool it was creating and it stopped it was blown out this i guess is what tunneling is guys i have never i've been making candles for over a year even on my practice candles i never ever ran into this I am baffled beyond belief. I kid you not. But I guess this is tunneling and I will not be pouring at that high temperature ever. Um, yeah, I wouldn't have known this had I sold it to a customer. I would never have known. And then I would be like, hey, you could still use it. Take your blow dryer and heat the top. Like, you don't, get, you don't do that. But I'm going to do that. I'm going to take uh, my heat gun and melt some of the wax down into this hole and let it reharden. But wow, I never experienced tunneling. And this is a really good scent. So I'm definitely going to fix this so I can burn it because I, I enjoy this honey and tonka scent. But yeah, wanted to give you guys an update. It has been. <laughs>
Thank you.